Thank you, Mr. President. This is a joint statement on behalf of the Cairo Institute for Human Rights Studies, the ICJ, the Human Rights Law Center, Civicus, Humanas, FIDH, ARC International, and the International Service for Human Rights. We are pleased to commend the Council for continuing to build on the improved performance in March. This past session has, in part, built on this success. The principled approach and perseverance of many delegations has enabled the Council to take several positive decisions. First of all, we applaud the landmark resolution on human rights, sexual orientation and gender identity. It represents a long overdue move by the Council to step up to the mark and begin to display the leadership in protecting all persons from human rights violations that the world expects from this body. In that regard, we salute the leadership of South Africans, both the government delegation and human rights defenders, which has galvanized the support of states from all regions. We regret that some states have attempted to portray the protection of all human beings from discrimination and violence as a divisive issue, but we recognize the readiness in this room to move beyond these difficulties and take more nuanced positions. We hope for and look forward to the constructive engagement of all in the panel discussion. While we are happy about this progress, we regret that the Council has backtracked on previously agreed language in the Violence Against Women resolutions, and we trust that the Special Rapporteur will continue to address violence against women with a focus on all vulnerable groups. We also welcome the renewal of several important special procedures mandates. While we welcome the Working Group on Business and Human Rights, we are disappointed that the mandate focuses almost exclusively on the guiding principles, and we trust that it and the Council itself will continue to work on the implementation of the framework, particularly concerning accountability and remedies. The renewal of other mandates, including those on the independence of judges and lawyers and extrajudicial execution, is welcome. But we also see those resolutions as lost opportunities to include language reflecting the Council's principled resolve to end reprisals, as enshrined in the outcome document of the review. We urge all states to ensure that specific cases are investigated and the broader, that the broader phenomenon of reprisals is made the subject of sustained attention in September. We welcome the response of this Council to the unfolding situations in Côte d'Ivoire, Libya and Syria over the, over the last several months, including the dedicated debates during these past sessions. The resolution on Kyrgyzstan and Belarus and the decision on Yemen are positive examples of incremental and innovative approaches. The selectivity and double standards, however, that have prevented the Council from addressing other urgent situations adequately, such as Sri Lanka and Bahrain, must be addressed more seriously by member states. The panel discussion um, on peaceful protest is a further positive attempt to do so, but will not be sufficient in itself. More cross-regional efforts, coupled with the kind of leadership and principled human rights-based approaches shown by individual delegations at this session, are key for success. Last but not least, uh, Mr. President, we wish to thank you for steering the Council through a challenging but overall successful cycle, and we look forward to working with you in your new reincarnation.